G'day everyone, it's that time of year again. They've got blue skies, green grass. Trout opening is only three or four days away. And as with this time last year, I'm gonna re-spool my trout reel, ready to go for the new season. Righto folks, before I do this, I'm just going to open some mail. I've got some mail this week, I'll open the mail, then I'll get stuck into how to spool up a trout reel. Hey Robbie, you've got mail! You better check your mailbox! Okay Robbie, thanks mate. What's the address? Post Office Box 3006, Yoranga LPO. Wangaratta 3677 Okay, thanks buddy. I'll go and check it right now. Right, yeah, before I spool up my, my reel, let's check out some mail. Cooper Simmons. Hmm, very interesting. <laughs> hey Robbie, my name is Coop. I'm 13 and I love fishing. I live in Hayfield, Victoria. And if you're ever close, I'd love to go for a fish and catch a few bass, redfin and trout. The lures I sent are homemade by my friend from Noosa, Queensland. I thought you might be able to use them for yellow belly and cod. The lures dive to about 1.5 to 1.8 metres and have an awesome action. If you're ever near Hayfield and want to go fishing, here's my phone number. <laughs> Can't read that out on camera, can I? From Coop, Robbie Fishing. Thanks, Coop. What a legend. Let's have a look at these lures. Apparently, they're going to be good for cod and yellow belly. <coughs> these look really cool. I've just got to give the rubbish to my assistant because it's a bit of a breeze and I'm out in the middle of a paddock. Can you hold that for me? How good are these? They're homemade lures made of timber. I'll just come over here a little bit. Homemade timber lures. Good for cod and yellow belly. They look excellent for yellow belly. Coop, you are such a legend. Thank you for these. And thank you very much for your friend, from your friend up in Queensland too. And I tell you what, Coop, I am going to be keeping your phone number because if I ever find myself down in Hayfield, mate, I will look you up. I will admit I don't get there very often. In fact, I think I've been there once in my entire life. But I really do need to broaden my horizons and go to some of these places, I know. Coop, I'm stoked with these. Tell your mate that I said thank you very, very much for these lures. Now, do you follow me on social media, Coop? Do you follow me on Facebook or Instagram or even on YouTube? Because I haven't got a name for these lures. I can't give them a shout out. I can't say check out such and such lures because there's no name. There's just uh, a friend from Queensland that makes these awesome lures. Thank you very much, Coop. I'm very excited. It's very, very kind of you. Thank you very, very much. Rightio. Now, I'm going to be putting this on my reel. This is my favourite line. You may have heard me talk about this in the past. This is Maxima Ultra Green. I like four pound. Maxima Ultra Green is monofilament line. I don't like to use braid on my trout reels for a number of reasons. Some people prefer braid and that's perfectly fine. We've all got our own favourites and we've all got our own preferences. Personally, I like the line to have a little bit of stretch when I'm trout fishing because trout like to jump out of the water, leap around a little bit, and I just think the stretch gives me that bit of security of not having the hooks fall out of the fish's mouth. I also find with mono that I don't actually sacrifice any casting distance using mono as opposed to using braid. So with cod fishing, the heavier line, the, the braid outweighs the, the mono and it's much better. But with trout fishing or light line fishing, I prefer mono. Anyway, I'm not going to get too deep into that. Let's get into spooling up this reel. Now the first thing I want to do is take off all the old line. Some people will tell you to put backing on your line. I think if you need to put backing on your, on your spool, what that means is that you've got too big a, re a reel or too big a spool for the line class that you're using. With this Shimano Stratic 2500 size, I find the four pound Maxima Ultra Green fits perfectly on the spool 
and that means that by having this one continual strand of line without any knots it doesn't hinder casting once you start using backing and tying line onto it you put a knot in your line and once you've got a knot in the line or in the spool when you cast and you start getting down low on line you can guarantee that just when you're trying to place that perfect little finesse cast that the line's going to hook up on that knot and stuff your cast up so i'd like to just have one lot of line tied to the spool tied to the lure no knots in between right i know the first thing i've got to do is take off the lure that's on here that's actually a Malua spinner. I've done a bit of a review of these last week. I was up at Stanley Dam, and that's been on there ever since. I'll sit that here on my trusty tripod. Now, what I'm going to do is open the bale and just pull all the line off. All right, yeah, I'm at the bottom by the looks of it. Yep. I'll break that off there. Pull that out through the rod. Now, this is the most important part. Never ever leave fishing line laying around because a lot of birds, particularly magpies, are notorious for it, but a lot of birds will pick up this line and use it to go and line their nests. They'll actually use it in their nests and they'll also get it tangled around their feet. And I have seen dead magpies hanging from trees with fishing line around their feet. That is not cool at all. So it's very, very important that you get all your rubbish line, all your old line. I've still got quite a bit out here. Right, there it is all there. It's very important that that goes in the car and then goes home and goes in the rubbish bin because that is environmental vandalism that will kill lots of different birds and animals. Rightio folks, I've got my spool of line. I've got my reel with no line on it. What I'm going to do is get the line, grab the end. Now I'm just going to throw that spool over there somewhere. Some people like to put it in a vise. You can actually buy special vices for this sort of stuff. Some people like to get their friends to hold it. They'll put a pencil in there and they're all fine. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. As long as the line ends up on the reel, then you've done it right. So this is just the way I like to do it and I'm just sharing my knowledge with others because some people don't know how to do this sort of stuff. So now I'm threading that back down through the rod because I'm actually going to reel this in almost as if I've got a fish on it. Rightio. Now it's time to tie it to the reel. Now I've got my wife beside me here with my other camera. She's going to zoom in close on this because there's a very important step here that you need to know when you tie a line on. Rightio. Now because I haven't got a table, I'm out here in the middle of a paddock. I've got to get down on my hands and knees and do it at ground level. The first thing you need to do is remove any uh, manure. You must have got manure for your brains. That's a line from a Chevy Chase movie. Right, now there's two very important steps here. The first important step is to make sure that the spool is open. If the spool's closed when you tie the line on, what will happen is you won't be able to reel the line in. It just simply just won't work. You have to open the spool in order to make sure that the spool catches the line so that you can reel it in. That's the first, now there's no special, that's the first important thing, but now there's no real special knot here. I normally just tie any kind of half hitch knot, wrap the line around a couple of times, like that. Now that's tied on there now. Now what I'll probably do is just cut that tag off before I reel it in. That's the first really important tip. The second most important tip is if you prefer to use braided line, if you want to use braid, you must have some monofilament line underneath, some monofilament backing, because the braid will not grip the spool. This mono, because well, it stretches a bit, it'll pull tight and grip the spool. Braided line will not grip the spool, and when you turn, the reel will turn, but the line will stay still, and you'll have to strip it all off, and I'll either waste a lot of line, or go to a lot of trouble to re-spool. So if you're putting monofilament line on a spinning reel like this, even if you only put 10 or 15 metres of monofilament line, you have to have monofilament backing underneath your braid. Now I'm going to cut this tag off, then I'm going to reel it in. 
Righty a so I've got it all on, it's tied up, I've cut the tag off. Now all I have to do is reel it in. Now I like to pinch the line between my thumb and my index finger here as I reel it in, and that just keeps an even consistency on the reel, on the line. So I've just got the spool on the ground here in front of me. It can go anywhere, it can roll around, it's got acres out here where I am. It can roll around the ground, it doesn't really matter. I'll throw it even. My wild bait rod, my Shimano Stratic, fully spooled and ready to go. One other really important tip is not to put too much line on. Just because you buy a spool with 250 metres of line doesn't mean you have to put 250 metres of line on. What happens if you put too much line on, when you cast, it will do what's called over spooling. It will over spool, which means that line will run off. It'll run off the end and you'll get tangles. You better to have a little bit less. More line on your reel means greater casting distance, but there is a definitive line where it becomes too much line on your reel and that creates tangles. So you want it full, but not over full. Mm -hmm. 